Hey guys, so we're starting the day three video today of lesson 7.2 and today we're going to be talking about properties of the cell membrane and why it is so important to the cell. So we talked the previous days about phospholipids and proteins and carbohydrates and cholesterol and all the different components that make up the fluid mosaic which is the cell membrane. Today we're going to be talking about how does the cell membrane control the movement of substances and what is a very important property of the cell membrane? So the first thing you guys need to know, and this word is gonna be coming up a lot from now and on, especially as we get more into cells and into the human body, is the word homeostasis. Homeostasis basically means the process of maintaining balance in an organism's internal environment. So one example of homeostasis that you can probably all relate to and know of in your everyday life is that the human body needs to remain at around 37 degrees Celsius. It doesn't matter if it's 40 degrees Celsius outside or if it is... Uh, if it's 10 degrees Celsius outside, your body has to stay at this temperature all the time. And that's because vital functions in your body require this temperature so that they can keep going. The only time your body leaves this temperature is if you are extremely cold and your body can no longer burn enough energy to keep you at 37 degrees Celsius or if you're sick, your body will give you a fever so that you can. it'll help you fight the bacteria because a lot of... Uh, a lot of people believe that the reason we get fevers is because even bacteria need to be at around 37 degrees Celsius, so when we heat up to 40 degrees, the bacteria will also begin to die. That doesn't always work. Usually the fever just affects us and hurts us. But regardless, homeostasis means basically your body's default settings. What do you always want to be at? If my body temperature increases to 38, it will cool me down back to 37 by sweating or by making sure that I, you know, calm down. And if I cool down to let's say 35 degrees or 36, my body will cause me to start shivering, which will increase the heat in my body and bring me back up to 37 degrees Celsius. So that's basically homeostasis, is maintaining a very specific balance inside your body, okay? So, why are we even bringing all of this up? Because your cells also need to maintain homeostasis, but your cells are not just thinking about their temperature. The main thing we're gonna be talking about is keeping a balance of fluids and solutes and substances inside and outside of your cells. So your cells must also maintain a perfect balance of materials inside and outside in order to maintain homeostasis. Remember, if we can't balance what is going in and out of the cell, that might actually kill the cell, right? So uh, one of the structures responsible for homeostasis is the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane has a has a property called selective permeability. The plasma membrane forms a thin, flexible boundary between a cell and its environment. It controls what can enter and what can leave. So let's go ahead and say that this right here is the plasma membrane. As we said before, we know that oxygen and glucose and all of the good stuff can come into our cells in controlled amounts while waste and stuff like that is supposed to not be able to enter our cell. So let's say that there was a lot of waste in the environment outside of my cell. I would need a way to stop that waste from entering the cell, right? Because obviously we don't want waste in, we want waste to leave and we want good materials to come in. How this works is basically like a fishnet. Some things can enter, some things can leave. So if you see here, Water can go in and out of this fishnet, but the fish need to stay inside or outside wherever they are needed, right? So this is a property called selective permeability, where as you can see, some substances can enter while others cannot. See this orange molecule? It's not actually able to enter. This is a very important function of the cell membrane because we obviously don't want waste to come back into our cells. We don't want too much salt to enter our cells. We don't want too much of a material that is unneeded or unnecessary to enter the cell. We don't want a lot of things to be leaving the cell if the cell actually needs them. So the plasma membranes Plasma membranes have selective permeability, which means that they allow some substances to pass through while keeping others out. 
and they control how, when, and how much of various substances enter and leave the cells, and it depends on the structure of the plasma membrane. So of course, if I wanted this orange substance to enter, I can easily put a little protein here, a transport protein, and allow it to enter. And then when I don't need it anymore, I can take that transport protein away and stop it from entering. So now you guys, I want you to open this on your own and try it out, but I am gonna go through it right now. So here we go. This is basically what you would be looking at for selective permeability. Selective permeability means, permeability means the ability to pass through something. So let's say uh, water is permeable. I can put my hand in and out of water, I can pass through it. But a brick wall is not permeable. When I say you have selective permeability, it means that to some things, this membrane will be like a brick wall. It cannot enter at all. And to some things, this membrane will be like water. It can very easily pass through as if it's barely even there. So now let's take a look. There are gonna be two dots in this experiment. There are gonna be black dots and there are gonna be blue dots. I set the permeability of black dots to zero and the permeability of blue dots to one, which means that they're completely permeable. And now let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm going to increase the speed, like for example, if I increase the heat of these particles, they would move faster and start moving around and spread out as fast as possible. So now if I take a look over here, this is my plasma membrane, as you can see it's made up of phospholipids. Only the blue ones are passing, but the black ones are not able to pass. Maybe the black ones are charged substances so they can't mix in with the plasma membrane. Maybe the blue ones are oxygen, they're uncharged, they're tiny, they're gases, so they can move in and out. So this is basically the perfect symbol of selective permeability because you can see that only some substances can pass while others have to stay outside of the cell or inside, it depends on which side of the membrane they are. The only thing that matters is that they cannot cross through this membrane, but other things can. This is why it's selective. It has selected that the blue one can pass, but the black one cannot pass. All right, so now guys, I want you to go and watch the day one, day two, and obviously today's video, and just get a basic idea of it because today you're gonna to be doing a quiz on the entire lesson all together. Okay, good luck guys.